The topic of today's khutbah is the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah being alim. One of the qualities of Allah, one of the attributes of Allah is, one of the names of Allah is al-alim. He is the knowledgeable, he is the all-knowing. He has the full knowledge of everything and everyone. That is a very important uh, attribute of Allah that has lots of implications in our beliefs, in our actions, in our lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, created us and as he has created us, of course, he should know everything. He is, it's expected that Allah knows because Allah says, Ala ya'lamu man khalaqa. Uh, the one who has created, should he not know everything? You know, imagine if someone has made this microphone. Uh, imagine someone who knows the electrical aspects of it and the mechanical aspects of it and, and he has put together everything. Of course, he is the first one to know anything about this microphone because he has created it and made it. Now, human beings still may have shortcomings, but someone who was, uh, uh, was the creator of the entire universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has no limitations in his knowledge, he has perfect knowledge, he has absolute knowledge about everyone and everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ He has full knowledge about everything, every little thing, big thing, everything. And Allah says that, وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ أَحَاتَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلْمَ Allah has encompassed everything with his knowledge, meaning that nothing is hidden to him. Allah knows what is uh, apparent in our bodies, what is inside our bodies, what is even in our mind, what is in our heart. Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ We have, Allah says, we have created humanity, human beings, and we know exactly what goes on, what uh, is soul whispers to him. Whatever goes in our mind, whatever goes in our heart, Allah has perfect knowledge of it. And Allah has perfect knowledge of the, uh, the earth and the heavens and what goes inside the earth, what goes in the air, what is inside the stone, what is inside the mountain, what is anywhere. There is no limit in, for, in knowledge of Allah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinite. The infinity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a very important quality of Allah that clarifies a lot of things for us. Allah being infinite means that Allah has no beginning, no ending. So he is al-awal and he is al-akhir. Meaning that Allah has been there forever and Allah will be there forever. There is no beginning for Allah, there is no ending for Allah. Allah is in fact the beginning of everything, the cause of beginning of everything, and the cause of ending of everything. This is very, very important to understand that Allah is infinite in terms of His existence, in terms of time, in terms of His space. There is no specific location that Allah is there because Allah has created the space and Allah has created the time. The time and space is subject to Him. The Allah is not subject to time. For us, there is a time and we are subject to time yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for him, there is no such thing as past, current, present, future. Because Allah has created the past and the future and the present. So Allah has perfect knowledge about future, just like he has knowledge about the past, just like he has the knowledge about the current situation. And thinking about the vastness of the knowledge of Allah, that Allah has infinite knowledge about every little detail of our past, of our birth, of every year of our life, every month, every day, every hour of our life, and current conditions and circumstances, and future of our life for the rest of our life on this earth, and future of our life in the next world. Allah has perfect knowledge of every aspect of our lives, of 8 billion human beings or so. The same thing, Allah has perfect knowledge of billions of other creatures, such as angels, uh, jinn, uh, animals, plants, all uh, uh, kinds of animals and, uh, and birds and, and uh, insects and everything that you can imagine, Allah has full knowledge about them. Now imagine the vastness of uh, knowledge of Allah. Allah says in one verse, قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي 
وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Allah says that if the oceans of the earth become the ink of a pen, imagine that oceans of the earth become the ink, and the trees of the earth, all of the trees in another verse says that become pens. Imagine that you, from one tree, how many pens you can make, a pen of this size, like a pencil, you know. And then Allah says, all the oceans of the earth will run out of ink, and all of the trees of the earth will be exhausted, the knowledge of Allah will not be exhausted if you write it down. And if you bring seven more such oceans on the earth, seven more trees uh, of the size of the trees on the earth, the knowledge of Allah will not be exhausted. Subhanallah. When we understand the vastness of knowledge of Allah and the infinite knowledge of Allah, it has serious implications for us that those implications really lead us to beliefs and actions and, and obedience and worship. How? First, when we know the vastness of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes us humble. Our knowledge is nothing compared to the knowledge of Allah. No matter how much we know about any subject, Sometimes we think that I am expert in this kind of IT work. I am expert in this kind of engineering work. I am expert in this kind of medical work. I have done so many surgeries. I have done so many this. I as piece of cake. No, you, you know nothing. You know nothing about that surgery that you have done millions of times compared to Allah. <laughs> because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at any time can make you a stack and you will be all of a sudden, oh, what? I have done this so many times and now how can I not do it? And now you make a mistake and, and you will forget certain things. And so your knowledge is really nothing compared to the knowledge of Allah. Be, staying humble is very, very important implication of that, that we always feel humble. And that basically leads us to another quality, the quality of consciousness of Allah, that Allah is always aware of what we are doing, Allah is watching us and Allah has full knowledge of our intentions and our hearts and our minds and our actions. So we have to be mindful of Allah. That's the state of taqwa. So first humility and then taqwa. Taqwa is really a great fruit of understanding the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, uh, you know, when you think about certain things and, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this, especially when you're thinking of making certain plots, you know, coming up with some kind of tricks, coming up with some certain things to just make money here and there and uh, can uh, uh, find some loopholes here and get away from taxes, get away from other things and make so much profit from business and all of that. So remind yourself that Allah just knows right now what I'm planning, what I'm thinking about. You know, if, if you remind yourself that Allah is aware of this, yes, nobody else knows, but Allah is no, knows that, all of a sudden you will change your mind. All of a sudden, inshallah, you will, you will change your plans and your decisions. That No, Allah is uh, fully aware of what I'm planning, what I'm thinking, and uh, Allah will record it and has assigned the angels to record it. So uh, consciousness of Allah being in the state of taqwa is a fruit of thinking about the knowledge of Allah and reflecting about the knowledge of Allah. Another fruit and attribute of understanding the knowledge of Allah is to trust Allah. When you understand that Allah has full knowledge about my life and full knowledge about this universe, so whatever he says, that's based on knowledge. If he asks me to do something, there are millions of reasons, millions of benefits behind that, and I better do it. And if he says, don't do something, even though I'm not convinced, I don't have enough reasons, enough, I should be 100% sure that Allah has millions of reasons for something that he do not, that I should not. For example, you're tempted to drink alcohol. And you say, I just like to have fun. Why Allah is not allowing me to have fun, to enjoy myself a little bit and just have this? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, don't drink alcohol, it's full of wisdom and full of all kinds of benefits and reasons. And not only you're not enjoying yourself, you're destroying yourself by drinking alcohol. And, and you, you could do many, many wrong things to your health, to your life. When Allah says, don't drink it, he has all kinds of knowledge about the alcohol, about ourselves, our creation, our body, our, the chemistry of our body, the biology of our body, everything. So the knowledge, when you, when you have the knowledge, 
uh, that Allah has full knowledge of my life and everything, then we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we trust Allah, as a result of this trust, we submit to Allah. Submission of the will, Islam comes as a result of knowing Allah and trusting Allah. And when you submit to Allah, then you start obeying Allah and worship Allah. Based on what? Based on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full knowledge and everything that he asks me to do is based on absolute knowledge, perfect knowledge, not relative knowledge, and it is full of benefits for me. So I better do what he is asking me. And when you say, oh, Ya Allah, I'm ready to do whatever you ask me to do because I have enough trust in you, that is submission, that is Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to live a life of submissiveness, be submissive to Allah and become more and more submissive every day, more and more submissive every month, every year, because the more we reflect about life, the more we reflect about Allah, the more we trust Allah, the more we learn about the benefits of, of the teachings of Allah, and that will make us a better servant of Allah, a more obedient and better worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has about our future. You know, uh, about uh, our future events that what would happen to us and whether we, uh, what we will do in this life and where we will end up in the next life. Does that affect our freedom of will? Sometimes people think that if Allah already knows everything about my future, then I have no freedom of will because that's what would happen and that's exactly uh, will take place. So where is my will? Where is my freedom? You know, so Allah has already know everything. No. We have to understand that the advanced knowledge of Allah about future is different from predetermination. Allah has full knowledge of everything about our future. But Allah has not predetermined every aspect of our lives. Allah has predetermined certain aspects of our lives and Allah has given freedom of will in some other areas of life. We should not mix it. A lot of people mix the two and they say, some people say, everything already predetermined. We just follow a path that's already decided. Some other people say, no, Allah has given us freedom of will and everything. We are free agents. We, are, we have nothing to worry about. Allah, Allah has just created us and that's it. Both of them are extremes from Islamic point of view. Both of these worldviews are extreme. The middle way is what Islam says that there are certain areas of your life that you are free to uh, uh, choose and decide and there are certain areas that are predetermined. So from now on we have to always think which areas of my life I have free will, which areas of my life I don't have free will and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mean predetermination. For example, the time of our birth when we were born it was predetermined by Allah. We have no choice in it. Who should be our parents? Allah decided that we have no choice. When we should die, Allah has predetermined that we will, it will not change and we will not have any choice. Uh, how our uh, organs work for us, our, our uh, heart, our lungs, the functionalities of, of those organs are predetermined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have no choice. Certain diseases that will come and take us no matter how careful we are and how much we try to avoid it, you know, certain viruses and bacteria in our life will come and take us and make us sick. And in spite of all the efforts that we have made, that's also something predetermined. So those areas of life that are predetermined, we have no choice in it. And also we will not be accountable in the next life in front of Allah. We will not be accountable for it. Why this happened? Why that happened? Why you were born to so and so? Why your parents are so and so? Allah will not ask us. The areas of life that we have a choice are mainly two areas, Iman and Amal, beliefs and actions. Beliefs and actions are the only two areas that Allah will ask us in the Day of Judgment. Everybody will be judged based on these two things, their beliefs and their actions related to beliefs. And these two areas we do have a choice because Allah says, وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Allah addresses Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that say to them that the truth has come from your master, from your nurturer. Now let them choose to become a believer or disbeliever. 
Whoever wants to be disbelieve in it, let them do that. Whoever wants to believe in it. So they have a choice in this world. They have freedom of will to believe or disbelieve. But of course, if they make the wrong choice, they will pay for it a heavy price in the next world. But in this world, Allah has given us freedom of will. So the belief is a choice for people. Actions also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا We have indeed guided the humanity towards the path, the path of truth, basically. We have given them enough tools and we have given them belief as part of their birth. Uh, they have, they, every human being is born as a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, they, he has given us the tools of guidance and he has sent prophets and messengers and books. So everybody has received some level of guidance. Now it is a choice for us where we want to be a grateful and live a life of gratitude or we want to become ungrateful and live a life of ingratitude and life of disbelief. It is up to us. Allah says it is their choice. So we have freedom of will in, the, in those two areas, iman and actions, and these are the only two areas that we will be asked about in the day of judgment. So now the advanced knowledge of Allah about our future about certain things are predetermined, uh, certain things are not predetermined, especially iman and actions. Uh, and we, uh, 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 Allah's knowledge about our future is like predicting, forecasting certain things about ourselves or about our other human beings. Just like we can forecast certain things, we can predict, especially people that we know very well, we can predict certain things. Oh, my husband, I know where he goes. My wife, I know she, where she is right now because I know her. I know him very well. My children, I know my children, what they are going to do. Uh, uh, you know, so I, I have a knowledge about their future and I can make uh, the, the, uh, forecast about their choices. For example, say I have a two years old son coming from that direction and I put a ball here uh, and I put a toy car on this side. I can predict that he's going to go after the ball or he's going to go after the car. Why? Because he's my child and I have knowledge about him. So I know which choice he is going to make. But did I take his freedom of will away by this knowledge? No. He has his own freedom of will and he will choose whether he goes to picks that or that. So I, my knowledge does not affect his freedom of will. So knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not affect the freedom of will in those areas that Allah has given us freedom of will himself. Let's be clear about that. We have choices in the areas that we will be accountable for. And uh, in this uh, way, uh, we inshallah move forward with our beliefs and actions all the time towards the right direction, towards the direction that Allah has guided us. Belief uh, in the knowledge of Allah, that Allah as ultimate knowledge, also leads us to have a lot of times direction, guidance, and peace. Guidance. We make a lot of decisions, and we don't know if this decision will be beneficial for me in the long term or uh, not. Would I be regret of this decision or not? So that's why if you really believe in Allah's knowledge, turn to Allah and ask His guidance. That's what istikhara is basically is. Istikhara is to seek good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask His guidance because He will guide you because He already knows. Uh, will, will you be proud of this decision 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, or you will be regretting it? So turn to Allah and ask for guidance for, for everything. Not only in major things, but in every little thing. That's why we keep asking in every record of our salah, اِهْدِنَ صِرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ اِهْدِنَ صِرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path. We're not saying, Ya Allah, guide me to Islam to become a Muslim. I'm already a Muslim because I'm praying. I'm asking, Ya Allah, guide me not only in general in my life, but especially in things that I'm doing after this Salat. You know, I, whatever decisions I have to make after this Salat in my work, in my job, in my family life, Ya Allah, guide me to make it according to the straight path. So that is why, because I know Allah knows best, so I'm asking His guidance about uh, uh, in every aspect of my life, in my daily life. And uh, so we, we should turn to Allah frequently because He has the knowledge. Also, when uh, sometimes, you know, you forget things and sometimes you, we become frustrated. Oh, you know, I can't remember this. What happened? You know, I, I, you know you're struggling to remember something, or even like name of somebody. I forgot the name of this person. I'm trying to, Ya Allah, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma udhakirni, Rabbi udhakirni. Ya Allah, remind me. Ya Allah, help me to remember it. Turn to Allah and you will see that Allah will remind you one way or the other sooner or later and you will, uh, it will come to your memory. Sometimes we lose certain things, right? 
we lose certain things and you get so frustrated. For example, you lose the keys of your car and now all of a sudden you, you have to go and you have an appointment. You f start, you know, making life terrible unto yourself and others. Oh, I lost this and screaming. And Does that benefit me? No. It benefits me to turn to Allah because Allah has already the knowledge of where are my keys. You know, Allah has exact knowledge of what it is. So turn to Allah and ask for guidance. Ya Allah, show me where it is. Bring it to my attention some way. And one way or the other, Allah will bring to your attention. And, but Allah will test us, test our patience, test our trust and all that. So thinking about the knowledge of Allah, the vast knowledge of Allah will help us in so many directions of our life, in so many aspects of our lives. And we would always, inshallah, stay humble, stay submissive to Allah, obey Allah and worship Allah and trust Allah and uh, have peace, have contentment in life, have confidence in the path of Allah and trust Allah. Subhanallah, our life will be completely different if we remind ourselves always about the infinite knowledge of Allah and the finite knowledge of ourselves or the humanity. Humanity, this, you know, basically uh, to la the last point of this, that the whole area of knowledge can be divided in two areas. One area of knowledge is what Allah has enabled us to discover, to learn, to develop. This is one area of knowledge that we learn from parents, we learn from teachers, we learn from schools, we learn from college, we learn from books, we learn from websites, we learn from other people. And we develop knowledge. Allah has given us the intellectual abilities. Allah has given us the faculties to make observations, to develop knowledge. This is one area of knowledge that Allah has given us the ability and the knowledge. Uh, he has made it accessible and available to us. Allah has subjected and made subservient the earth and the heavens so that you can study them. And Allah has made the nature to work based on consistent patterns. And those consistencies help us to develop knowledge. You know, if, for example, if we are studying, say, our lungs, you know, uh, 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 as a doctor, medical doctor, if the lungs do not work in a consistent manner and there are not certain patterns and functionalities, and if the lungs work on a random basis and um, our heart works arbitrarily and randomly, there's no way that we can develop knowledge of cardiology, knowledge of, uh, you know, uh, respiratory system and all that. And the same way we're studying the nature. Uh, every day we uh, get to hear about the forecast of the weather. If Allah did not make the pattern of clouds and movement of the clouds and the movement of the wind and, and uh, all of those things uh, consistent, uh, we would have not been able to know anything and, and predict anything about the weather. So Allah has enabled us. That's the first area of knowledge. Second area of knowledge is what he has sent through revelation. That that knowledge is super knowledge that we have no way to find out about. Allah has sent it through revelations, through prophets, through books. In, for example, uh, about next life. What, uh, what, what, what will happen after death? No matter how many scientists and the philosophers, they all get together to find out about next life, there's no way to find out what happens after death. To find out about angels around us, there's no way to find out through science or anything. There's no way to find out about our souls. There's no way to find out about Allah himself. You know, how to worship Allah, what pleases Allah, how to connect with Allah, uh, what is the success criteria from Allah's point of view, what pleases him, what displeases him. All of this, there's no way for us to find out except from Allah himself. So that special knowledge is very important because that special knowledge will equip us to better use our human knowledge that we have developed. It will enable our hearts and brains and minds to think better, to make better decisions and to use the knowledge in better ways and to live a responsible life and to live a beneficial life for ourselves and for others when we understand the value of revelation, that knowledge that Allah has sent to us. And without that knowledge, we would be misguided no matter how much we know, how many degrees we have, we would be misguided without the knowledge that Allah has sent through revelations, through prophets, through messengers, through books. And that knowledge also teaches us how to live a balanced life, how to live an optimized life, how to live a life that you will not regret later. So all of those things will come through revelations. Everything is from Allah. Knowledge is only from Allah, but 
Alm, the word Alm in the Quran, remember, that is used only for confirmed knowledge, for truth, for realities. Alm is not in the Quran used for assumptions, for hypotheses, for those things. No, only for whatever is the truth, that, that knowledge is called Alm in Islam in the Quranic terminology. And so the, the knowledge of Allah is perfect. And whatever Allah has taught us and whatever we learn based on the knowledge of Allah that he has given us is what we should live based on. And that's, alhamdulillah, guidance of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us to always turn to Allah for alm. Rabbana zidna ilma. Ya Allah, increase our knowledge. Ya Allah, give more knowledge and make knowledge beneficial to us. And uh, the knowledge that you have given us, make it beneficial and uh, give us the knowledge that is beneficial. Ya Allah, help all of us to turn to you always for guidance. Ya Allah, help all of us to seek knowledge from you as you are the source of all knowledge. Ya Allah, help us to depend on you at all times and trust you and submit to you at all times based on your knowledge that you have. Ya Allah, help us to live a humble life, a submissive life, and a life of obedience and worship at all times. Ya Allah, bless our knowledge with your knowledge. Ya Allah, accept our humble efforts and forgive us for our mistakes and shortcomings. Ya Allah, accept our for, uh, efforts. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وللسائر المسلمين